Daryl Freeman with Concrete Hello, Conversations. Eight, eight, nine, and, uh, I am traveling from St. Kitts, and I have with me the co-pilot, uh, Larry Quinnen. It's the reason why we went to St. Kitts. Uh, I've always admired Larry over the years, and I got a unique opportunity here to ask him some questions. The first one I've asked before, but I'm going to ask again. Uh, how did a poor kid from St. Kitts become the global CIO for Deloitte Worldwide and Deloitte USA? You know, Dow, it's really good to be here. Uh, uh, traveling from St. Kitts, uh, fantastic island, really, really beautiful. Yes. But I think the short answer to this is people helped me. And I think it's important for me to acknowledge that and recognize it. And it started all the way from parents who really cared to teachers who did extra to people who, when my career appeared in doubt, actually stepped in and helped me at times even when I wasn't smart enough to ask for that help. People who said things about me in rooms where I was not present. And that's really made a huge impact on me and really inspires me to try and do the same for others. Well, that explains a lot because I've known you for 20 plus years and you've been extremely helpful to me and many other people in my career and in their careers. Uh, you reached out to help me 20 plus years ago, probably when I didn't deserve or was not even qualified enough to, to, to ask for help. But you mentioned something unique about what people say about you when you're not in the room. How valuable is that? It's extremely valuable, indispensable almost. I recall the situation where one of my roles was ending and I was actually thinking of leaving the firm and doing something different. And I was called by our CEO into his office uh, and I didn't know the CIO well at that time and after a conversation you know, he offered me a new role, a cabinet position as a CIO. And that struck me, and I really dug into how that happened. And it turned out that there were a number of supporters who, when I was not in the room, had conversations with him that really made him believe that this was something to investigate further. Without those people taking the initiative to say things about me in a room where I was not present, I don't think my career would have had the same trajectory. So, so Larry, being the global CIO for Deloitte and the my USA CIO for Deloitte, you have helped hundreds of people in their careers and you've, made, you've been able to build a high quality organization uh, with people that may have been overlooked by other companies. How have you done that? I believe it starts with a fundamental belief in people and a fundamental belief in diversity. I still hear some people in room saying we can't find diverse talent. And I think some of that is a lack of confidence that there is true diverse talent. I start with an absolute confidence with decades of experience in this field, that there is a lot of truly diverse talent. There is African Americans who have talent. There are Hispanics who have talent. There are women who have talent. There are white women, black women, white men. Lots of people have talent. We got to make sure we're finding all of those people, not just some of those people. And I think if you have this unshakable confidence that there is diverse talent out there, then it's just a question uh, of going and finding it. It is also important to set expectations. I tell people who are going to work with me, we're going to work hard. We're going to have fun. We're going to have a truly high-performance culture. We're going to set those expectations up front. But it's an unshakable confidence that there's power in diversity, there's power in high performance, and putting those two things together, you can't lose.
And so just be, and because you've been high performing, just and because you've delivered, uh, you've been rewarded with the CIO for USA, the CIO for the for, for uh, global CIO, and you last year you traveled around the world for work twelve times. Twelve times. How do you keep that pace? And how do you manage all those resources and maintain the high performing levels that you've maintained? So I'm one of the most fortunate people in the world. I've been working since elementary school (laughs) in my father's office after school. And it's been many, many decades. But I'm the most fortunate person in the world because I've always liked what I do. So it's not a, a burden for me. I like the people I work with. I like the organization I'm a part of. Uh, I like the people I serve. And it it is a fantastic experience to see a plan come together, to see an application built, uh, to see infrastructure delivered, and to see our people, our practitioners, successfully using technology that I've been a part of. So I actually consider it a privilege to be able to perform in the role I view it as a privilege to serve the people that I'm fortunate enough to be able to serve. And I consider it a privilege to be able to lead an organization of such high-performing talent. Well, Larry, it's been a pleasure to uh, spend some time with you down in your hometown of St. Kitts. It's been a pleasure to to have you as a friend. Uh, High-performing is... uh, understatement you you and your organization have always been high performing and you've always been able to find the best talent out there uh you have anything you want to say to me i want to other, say other than you want me to get you on the ground safely <laughs> that would help <laughs> and my mother believes that too yes but you know want to thank you for this series of conversations what you do to inspire young people what you do to inspire entrepreneurship, what you do to foster talent, what you do to help diversity is something that should be emulated and admired and really appreciate the ability to to have this conversation. Well, Larry Quinlan uh, signing off here with Cockpit Conversations at 24,000 feet and I'm going to do my best not to make your mom mad and to get us both on the ground safely. Cockpit Conversation with Larry Quinlan.